Morning, everyone. Good to see you. I haven't seen you for a long time. When was the last time I was here? I was over there uh, last year in what, December was it or what was it? Hey? October. Yeah. Uh, all right, anyway, good to see you all. Um, I don't see all of the faces that were back then over there. But anyway, um, I thank God for all of you that are coming today here. And I'll just put this microphone here. Can you hear me now? Is that all right? I'll speak louder if need be. <laughs> but I'm pretty loud anyway. Um, so thank God for this opportunity uh, to be with you. Praise the Lord. It's a, it's a nice and beautiful day. A little bit chilly, a little bit cold, but it's still good. And uh, as I was coming here when... Um, 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 Tony uh, told me that we're going to meet here in Mount Me. I thought, where is that? <laughs> That's a, you know, a long way off. And as I was coming, whining and up and down, I thought, these guys are ready to take off. I mean, uh, they are closer to heaven as uh, never before. I mean, this is really good. So you guys are uh, the first one. When Jesus comes, you will be the first one to be caught up in heaven. Well, don't forget me, please. <laughs> so, uh, and please pray for me and my family because it's very important for us. Uh, you know, we have issues. We have a lot of things that we need to overcome, I believe. And, um, you know, only the Holy Spirit and only God can help us with that. Amen? And we need a lot of your prayers. And I believe that you are already praying for us. And thank you for your prayers. And I am praying for you guys as well. And may God help us to be united and be with Jesus one day as he comes. Um, as you all know, or maybe don't, but I'm just going to say a little bit what happened last year. I was still driving the buses until uh, they kept me until, um, until the finishing of the school, which is in December, first or second uh, week of December. And then I started a new job, which is uh, window installations. Yeah, maybe you should just uh, edit it, that one, you know. And um, thank God, I mean, uh, I got a good job now. I'm installing double glazed windows. And as I came into that, I used to work for them before, but they called me again, and now I'm uh, working over there. Praise God, and I'm getting a better money than I used to. And uh, I still have opportunity to... Um, to witness to people, which is, which is really what I like and what I, uh, you know, love to do. And uh, that was the reason I started bus driving, because I thought, oh, what, how am I going to witness to people in a large number of people and at the same time being paid for it? <laughs> so I thought, all right, this is a good uh, way of doing it. And, uh, you know, my wife said, oh, bus driving is good for you. So uh, that's how I got into bus business, I mean bus driving business. Uh, and I was for 11 years with the city council and um, they were um, good to me, but uh, at the same time because I was witnessing a lot, giving thousands and thousands of uh, literature to the, um, to the uh, pay, um, uh, passengers, uh, they weren't very happy with that. They called me so many times into the office that I just uh, they didn't know what to do. And they say, hey, you got to promise us that you're not going to do this anymore. All right, I said, I promise. Then when I went b back again driving, I kept for a while promise, and then I broke the promise. Well, you said you're not going to do it. Well, I said I promised to him <laughs> I'll do it. So which is better promise, you know? I got to keep my own promise first. Anyway, to cut the story short, um, they end up, the boss over there that was over there, Ian, Ian McKenzie, he's a really good guy. I gave him the book of the story of redemption and steps to Christ, and he took it as soon as I came into that depot. Anyway, he, uh, <clears throat> uh, he asked me one day, uh, I mean, I want you to write me a letter. Why are you talking about Jesus Christ? Well, I said, sure, I will. So I wrote him 10 pages, so there you are. Uh, so hopefully he, had, he, had, uh, he read that many times, those 10 pages. 
And uh, then when they decided to get rid of me, uh, uh, the boss from the city, he actually um, he asked me to write him a letter. Why should they keep me on the job? So I wrote him 16 pages. Well, anyway. <laughs> so, the, <laughs> but thank God, God gave me another job and um, I was witnessing over there as I finished with a school bus driving over there that year, last year. I gave so many steps to Christ to the whole uh, children over there of, in my bus. Everybody took about 120 uh, steps to Christ or maybe even more. Some of them asked for more for their friends and all that. So I gave it to all of them. So praise God. Please pray for those children that they will be uh, one day in heaven anyway. Uh, so praise God for this opportunity. And today uh, I was basically I, have, uh, I had another a sermon in mind that I prepared, which is uh, the long suffering of God, which is, uh, I haven't yet finished, I started it, but I was thinking to have this one here, uh, that one, but um, uh, I decided to go for this one. This one is a little bit uh, shorter and a little bit um, different that we need, especially in these days. Um, and it's called Bible and <clears throat> positive thinking all right so we're gonna take a look through the Bible what is sort of uh, thinking or as the man think is in his heart so is he so if we do think positively if we think negatively that is actually giving us uh, either a positive result or a negative result all right so we just need to we, we need to know and understand what the Bible teaches or how we should think or what we should think about, which is very important, right? Because our mind is, uh, you know, like a sponge. What we put in it, it comes out. So if we put a good and positive things in it, it will come good and positive things out. But if we put negative things and always, I mean, it's not to say that there is no negative things. There is negative things, right? In the world, and especially these days, there are a lot of negative things. But we shouldn't focus on the negative things. We should focus on the positive. Mainly on Jesus Christ. He was always a positive, even though he was a man of sorrows. That's what the Bible says, isn't it? He was a man of sorrows. He was the most sorrowful person on this planet. Yet, Nobody, nobody have seen him. I mean, a few times it's been recorded that he was crying, right? But in, in the public, he was always happy. He was always kind and loving and caring for people, isn't it? Wow, praise God. You know, we need to talk about Jesus because he is a positive person. He is the one who came to show us how to live, to show us the Father. Last time that, we, uh, that I have spoken here was, uh, what was the, the theme? Can you remember? What was the theme of uh, uh, last time that we met together? That was a little bit, a while ago, right? So you probably forgot. Anybody knows? Nah? The truth and the lie. And that was about uh, the issues we had here, right? Anyway, we're not going to go into that now, but... Today we're going to talk about we're going to talk about uh, positive things. Um, somebody said that, uh, or, or or they say that uh, a man, or you know, uh, we are thinking between forty-five thousand and fifty thousand thoughts during the day. During the day, yes, and and. Which, which comes up to about 50 thoughts a minute. Okay? So that's a lot of thoughts, eh? <laughs> 50,000 thoughts we're thinking. And, and someone said that most of those thoughts, most of the people are thinking negatively. About 80% are people are thinking negative thoughts instead of positive thoughts. Which is not really good, is it? <laughs> um, and uh, I don't know if any of you heard of, um, <clears throat> have you heard of uh, Norman Vincent Peale? Anybody heard of him? 
Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, so wh wh what was his idea? What was his... Do you know who he was? What was he? Sorry? Okay. Yeah, all right. He wrote, he wrote a couple of books. Yes, that's which is true. He wrote a book um, called <clears throat> Power of Positive Thinking. All right, you got it? All right, well, there you are. So do you know how many, how many uh, um, copies did he sell? 15 million copies. 15 million. 15 million. But maybe more than that now. That was, that's an old uh, statistic. And uh, it, he, it was translated into uh, 40 different languages, which is, uh, that shows us that he was a powerful man. He was... He, he did it. And on top of that, he was, <clears throat> previously, he was a, <coughs> excuse me, he was a, um, <clears throat> a pastor in uh, one of the, uh, one of the uh, churches in America. Uh, <clears throat> so, but, but to, uh, we just need to say something <clears throat> that he is a Freemason as well. And it's not just an ordinary Freemason. He was a 33-degree Freemasonry, which is the highest level of masonry. Isn't that right? <clears throat> so I wouldn't recommend the, these books, but I do have here, I'm just going to... I do have my own. It's all right. It's all right, brother. I have it. Anyway. Thank you. Sorry about that. <clears throat> just... Uh, but having said that, he had in, uh, in this book, he had a few things that are, well, positive thinking is good, right? But <clears throat> we're going to talk about what he wrote, some of the things in that book, just a, just a, couple, of <clears throat> a couple of things that he mentioned. <clears throat> so he said, um, the best way to get uh, rid of negative thoughts <clears throat> is to immediately exchange them with the positive thoughts. All right? Now, thank you very much, but I have, I have my own. That's all right. That's okay. You can keep that one if you want. <clears throat> the best way to get rid of negative thoughts is to replace them immediately with the positive thoughts. <clears throat> now, that he said it is a bit hard to do, but it can be done. All right? So, which is, uh, which is uh, I mean, one good thing that he gave an advice. Uh, another thing that he said, overcoming negative thoughts <clears throat> and bad memories is by thinking to yourself that all good things you can do uh, through God, who gives you power? Well, that's a good thing, isn't it? Through God. <clears throat> All things you can do, right? So, uh, I mean, knowing that he was a pastor previously, I mean, uh, this is good. But although he was criticized because he didn't talk much about Jesus and about God in his book, he was just uh, basically <clears throat> talking more from his perspective or how we as human beings can come, overcome that positive thinking. Now, <clears throat> that's uh, good and bad in itself, right? But um, another thing that he said, uh, let your good and happiness be stronger than your anger and hatred. Wow, that's good, right? Let your good and happiness be stronger than your hatred and uh, bad things in your life, right? <clears throat> anger, overcoming anger with a positive thinking. <clears throat> Change your thoughts. Let your mind be open to new ideas. And you will see that your life will change for better. Isn't that good? Change your thoughts. But what does the Bible really say about this, changing your thoughts? Can we change our thoughts? Can we change our, can the leopard change his spots? <laughs> so basically, 
he left something out. We cannot change ourselves. We can be changed by God, by the Holy Spirit, by, by the Word of God. So what we put in is the Word of God. If we put it in, in our mind, in, our, in us, then we can be changed. But change your thoughts. Let your mind be... You know, <clears throat> I, can, I can tell you from my own experience. I know how many times I thought, ah, I'm not going to think about that. And then I fall back, back into the same trap. I said, man, why is this sort of thing always dominating my mind, you know? <clears throat> it just keeps going up. And, you know, and I, I pray about it. I say, Lord, take that away from me, please. I need a new start. I need to be, get rid of that, you know? Especially, you know, some stupid things. I don't know. I'm not going to say everything what I think. But anyway, <clears throat> we all have uh, now and then certain things, right? But as I realized, without Christ, we can do nothing. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Can we do anything? No. <clears throat> we cannot change ourselves. But only Jesus, only God, only Holy Spirit can change us. Amen? <clears throat> so... In reality, this is just partially right, what he said. Change your thoughts. And by doing so, you, you will be more happy, right? But that's what the Bible teaches. I mean, you know, <clears throat> he wrote this book. But when you look at it, how many books are these in print or in uh, circulation? How many books we have of these, right? Way more than his. So praise God for that. <clears throat> <clears throat> also, I have found example of the doctor whose name is Carl Cy Simpton. Have you, anybody heard of Carl Simpton? He was a doctor. He is a doctor. He has a, his clinic in uh, um, California somewhere. <clears throat> his own clinic. And he was there to, um, uh, to his patients... There, there are patients that were really terminally ill and at their last stage of uh, their illness. And his, um, <clears throat> his job was to uh, give them uh, therapy, uh, basically to um, give them therapy to ease their or, or kill those cells or whatever, cancel cells in this situation, I believe. <clears throat> but... He, um, <clears throat> he was teaching his patients a technique of visualization. <clears throat> Do you know that? Technique of visualization. What is, what is that about? Anybody? Can you explain? What does it mean, visualization? Yes? Believing it, and, 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 that, and because of that, <coughs> you have the outcome of a positive outcome, right? <coughs> okay, yeah, thank you very much. That's, that's exactly right. So what he did, he was teaching his patients to have that kind of visualization. <coughs> he wrote a book with a, a hidden... Uh, called Cancer in the Mind. So what, what that book was ta talking about is that <clears throat> it's all in your mind. And, and we know actually that Ellen G. White is talking about that. Most illnesses are within our minds. <clears throat> Most people are, uh, from their illness, even physical illnesses, it's the result of their thinking. So... What we think is very important. And then he said <clears throat> here, which basically is just repeating what Alan White was talking about. <clears throat> um, that is talking a connection of... Oops. He's saying that there is a connection between a mind and this illness. So, <clears throat> in other words, this doctor saying that what is happening in the patient's mind is the key of his healing. And 
I saw that more and more people see the role of the mind in their healing. <clears throat> so, in other words, you can be healed through your mind. That's what he's saying. All right? But that's half truth. <laughs> we know as Christians that <clears throat> that's, a, that's a one positive thing, positive thinking, but without God, we can do nothing at the same time. So we just got to <clears throat> make sure that we have that right balance in this, this section. <laughs> My job was to expose people through radiation <clears throat> that were in the last phase of their illness, terminal illness. Uh, then <clears throat> I began to see a phenomenal, he says, how every, everyone uh, uh, ever was, however was the progress of their illness or healing of their illness, <clears throat> those that had a bigger expectation from their treatment through these radiations, <clears throat> uh, they were the ones that had a better results. I had a patient that said to me that he is visualizing that that machine for <clears throat> radiation is killing his cancer cells. And in having that visualization that that machine is killing his cancer cells actually <clears throat> uh, gave him positive, more positive results than the ones that didn't have that kind of um, therapy of visualization. Then, <clears throat> then we have a. Uh, so, in other words, if you expect to be healed, <clears throat> uh, you will be healed. All right. I was thinking to find out what does the Bible say about about our thoughts. <clears throat> Let's go to, uh, to the book of Isaiah. So if we can have a book of Isaiah 7 and 8. So we're going to read. <clears throat> Maybe if we can have somebody read this uh, verses for me, please. If you want to. Yep. Somebody wants to read the verses, please. You can. Just lift up your hand, head and hand and yeah, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, <clears throat> and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Thank you, Tony. <clears throat> so we see here, let the wicked, let the wicked forsake his ways. Forsake his thoughts. Why? I mean, and it's talking about here, it's, it, it's talking about the ungodly people, all right? <clears throat> but we are talking about us, that we know God, amen? So we, we need to uh, be more vigilant, more um, into this than ungodly people. But <clears throat> it's talking about the ungodly people, wicked people. Hey, Forsake your thoughts. Think what I'm thinking. <clears throat> Make sure you have my thoughts, for my thoughts are better than your thoughts. Way better than your thoughts, amen? So, when you look at it, <clears throat> in this sense, you know, we need to, uh, this is what the Bible says. Uh, I have a few examples of positive and negative thinkings from the Bible. When you read the story of Jacob, let me ask you a question. One question, please. Was Jacob a positive thinker or a negative thinker? <clears throat> That's a question for you. Let, let's see. Okay, this is how we're going to do it. How many of you believe that Jacob was a positive thinker? <clears throat> All right. How many of you believe that Jacob was a negative thinker? Okay, all right, so we see, all right, we see a little bit difference, but okay, I, I'm not saying that he wasn't an uh, always negative thinker, but mostly he was a negative thinker, 
All right, that's the answer. We're going to see why. So we're going to see this <coughs> Jacob. Uh, <coughs> So when, when you analyze his life, you can see that most of his life was a negative thinking. So we're going to go, go to, uh, <clears throat> uh, and especially when we know that he is a man of God, right? He should have been a more positive thinker than negative, isn't that right? I mean, we all have positive thoughts and negative thoughts, it, you know, in different, depending on our situation, depending on, on what's happening around us. And there are a lot of things that are influencing our thinking, right? But <clears throat> when we look at it as a man of God, he should have been more positive. But with, let's have a look, a few things. <clears throat> um, and, and see what was he thinking in certain situations, all right? Uh, maybe because his circumstances in his life have played a great role, uh, but we see as a man, if we go to uh, Genesis, let's go to Genesis 42 and verse 36. Genesis 42, verse 36. If anybody wants to read it, please <coughs> read it for us. You will give me, uh, you'll be a great help for me. Genesis uh, 42 verse 36 and the Bible says and Jacob their father said unto them me have ye bereaved of my children Joseph is not and Simeon is not and ye will take away Benjamin away all these things are against me hmm. all right <laughs> now we see Joseph here I mean uh, Jacob here saying hey what are you guys doing this was his children right <clears throat> he had two wives, unfortunately. Uh, we know all the story anyway. But he says, hey, Joseph is no more. Did, was he thinking positively or negative? Was he thinking, <clears throat> uh, Joseph is somewhere over there. I mean, concerning that he had a dream that he would be a leader, a king or whatever. Everybody will bow down to him. I mean, you know, take a, we have to have everything in consideration. I mean, what does the Bible say is that he hid these uh, uh, <clears throat> dreams of Joseph in his heart. So he knew it. <laughs> but because he had a wrong report from his children that, uh, that uh, some beast had killed him, he was thinking that he's no more. So he wasn't thinking positively. And, and another thing is, I mean, there's no Samuel, this guy over there, whoever he is <clears throat> in Egypt, he took my other child. I mean, and you want now the most loved one that I have left out of all of you, Benjamin, you want to take away from me too. <laughs> Come on, children, what are you doing to me? You know, I'm just going to go with my sad face down in the grave. Isn't that right? <clears throat> That's what he was thinking. That's, was that a positive or that was negative? That was negative. Very negative. <clears throat> All right. Now, so if we go a little bit further in chapter 43, verse 12, L let's go to chapter 43, verse 12. Who wants to read this one? <clears throat> verse 12, please. Anybody? And take thou money in your hand, and the money that was bought again, again in the mount of your sacks, carry it again in your hand. Um, peradventure it was an oversight. Okay, <clears throat> so <laughs> let's see this one. Was Jacob thinking positively on this one or negatively? Hey, take this money back. Come on. Oh, who knows what this guy planned over there? You know, he gave it to you so you can accuse you and take all my children and everybody, right? It wasn't a negative thinking there. 
So he said, hey, take this money, put it. He, he wasn't thinking, oh, maybe, maybe God, maybe there is something to this situation. Maybe there, why, why, why there is so money there? You know, why are, are all of the money is still in there? I mean, that could have a clue for something positive, isn't it? But no way, it wasn't positive. <clears throat> it will continue to go negatively, right? All right. So let's see what was the what was the situation with uh, with his uh, children. <clears throat> let's read verse fourteen. Okay. So somebody read the verse fourteen, please, for us. And God Almighty give you mercy before the man that he may send away your other brother and Benjamin, if I be. If I be bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. Okay, so what does this, this word bereaved mean? What does that mean? What does that word mean, bereaved? If I am, if I am anybody, what does it say in your, in your Bible, please? In the, in the um, Spanish, yeah. Deprived. deprived. Okay, bereaved, deprived, <coughs> or... If I'm left without a children, I'm left without a children. So we see him here continually po negatively, going negative. Ah, I'm going to be left with the, without children. I mean, he, there were so many clues in front of that that he could have said, oh, wait a minute. Money was in there in the sack, you know, all of their uh, sacks back. And, uh, you know, he could have think more positively than negatively, in, in my opinion. And he could have said, oh, okay, well, what's going on? I mean, ah, Joseph, maybe he's still alive. <laughs> well, I don't know, you know. This, 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 you know, he could have, because when you look at it, <clears throat> he knew the dream. He knows the dream, and he was, he was constantly thinking, you know, about that dream. But when Joseph was, uh, you know, he got a, a wrong story about uh, what happened to him, then he thought, well, that's the end of that dream. <laughs> he wasn't thinking about that dream really being, being a, a true dream. But, so if I am left without children, I'll be left without children. That's what he said. So let's, let's go next. Let's see how his children reacted. Uh, if we're going to, let's read in verse 18. What does it say, verse 18? All right, I can read it. And the men were afraid because they were brought into Joseph's house. And they said, because of the money that was returned in our sacks, at the first time are we brought in that he may seek occasion against us and fall upon us and take us for bondmen and our asses, our monk, donkeys or whatever. So he sees, they see here, oh no, <clears throat> we are going into the, this uh, um, leader or this king next to Pharaoh, we're going into his house, oh no, what is he going to do to us? <gasps> wow, so they're thinking negatively again. Children like father, like, like son, eh? But, <clears throat> let's continue. Uh, in verse 23, what does it say in verse 23? And he said, peace be to you. Fear not your God and the God of your father had given you treasure in your sacks. I had your money. And he brought Simeon out into them, unto them. <clears throat> so who is this guy? Who is this guy that, that is talking? Please. Sorry? No, 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 no. Excuse me. Who is this guy that's talking? Yeah. He, he was the master of the house of Joseph. He was the leader <coughs> in, 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 in uh, Joseph's house. He was the hidden, right? He was the unbeliever. 
And guess what? He's thinking more positively than the, than the believers, right? <laughs> Can you see that? <clears throat> hey, he says, hey, peace be to you. I have your money. I had your money. <laughs> Even though he was lying because he put him in, right? <clears throat> but he's, he's trying to, to make them to think positively. <laughs> but what they say, oh, you know, they were so scared. And then he, he said, hey, your God... Come on, your God that you believe and your God of your father, he put it in. <laughs> can you see that? What a positive, we, you know, sometimes we can learn from, from the hidden, from those who don't, unbelievers. We can learn to be positive. Amen? And they can teach us, eh? <clears throat> so. <sighs> All right, so if we go... <clears throat> If we go now to, um, uh, to verse uh, 45, please, in verse 5. <clears throat> who is talking this time? Anybody who wants to read? Please, anybody wants to read? <clears throat> Since he is reading, he can maybe read for us anyway. Can you read for us? In the Spanish? Or in Thanks, English? in both. <laughs> now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourself that ye sold me hither for God did send me before you to preserve life in Spanish you can read it in Spanish too <laughs> ahora pues no os entristizcáis ni os pese de haberme vendido acá porque para <coughs> perseveración de vida me envió Dios delante de vosotros all right, thank you very much. Now, <clears throat> who is talking now? Joseph. Now, is this positive or negative? Positive. Why is it positive? I mean, he must be like his uh, mother, eh? A little bit positive, eh? <laughs> she said, hey, God said that you will be um, uh, number one. Well, let's, let's make it happen, all right? <laughs> so here he says, now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that ye sold me hereafter, for God did send me before you to preserve life. This is Joseph speaking. So it's not his mother, but his, uh, his grandmother. Sorry, I, I made a mistake. <clears throat> but anyway, so he's a little bit of positive there. He's positive, hey, don't worry. Don't worry, you didn't do it, God did it. <laughs> and which is true, right? They, were, they had a bad thoughts. To begin with, they, were, they had a thoughts that they want to kill Joseph. And hey, let's see what's going to happen to his dreams, eh? But God turned it around and said, hey, let's not, let's not, you know, get ourselves uh, with blood, with his blood, you know. L let's sell him to these uh, people over there that are passing by, eh? So what did Joseph say? God did it, not you. God did it. So praise God. That's good. Positive. <clears throat> All right. So let's, let's go now to and s see some other things. <clears throat> let's go to Numbers 13, 31, and 32. So please, if we can go to Numbers 30, 13, 31, to 30, and 32. <clears throat> this is another story. But the man that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are strong, stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children um, of okay, is there a <clears throat> Israel saying, the land through which we have gone <coughs> to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of a great statue. Wow. So, what is this? Is this positive or negative? Sorry? Negative? Oh, there is a little bit of uh, truth in it. Is it full truth? It says here, <clears throat> it says here, oh, it's a land that um, swallows, in other words, 
uh, where is that word? That's, uh, yeah, <clears throat> that, that swallows its people. <laughs> Come on, what's this? They're making it up. And they, they're saying it negatively, but they're also making it up even further to make it more negative. Swallowing his people. I mean, they said it, that they are giant people, which is true, right? <clears throat> but, in other words, I mean, uh, they're making it more up. All right, so let's see in verse 27, I think 27 or 28. Can you go to uh, verse 28 there? Or 29? Uh, <clears throat> and let's see uh, the difference. 29? Yeah. In Numbers, number 13, 29. Let's see. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, no, it's no, 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 it's a wrong verse. Okay. All right. Anyway, we know, the, we know that verse that, uh, what did Caleb, Caleb said? Anybody knows that verse? Huh? 30. Okay, you want to read it for us, please? Give her the microphone here. Thank you. <clears throat> hey, turn it around, please. That would be better. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Ah, oh, wow. So what is this? Is this positive or negative? Positive. Take a look. He says, hey, come on. Why did Caleb say this? Why did Caleb say, hey, we are well able. Uh, were, were they well able to take over Camden? Honestly? No, not, they, they were not well able to overcome them, right? Let's, let's put it that way. But why did he say? Because why? Because God said so. Because God said, what did God say? He said, <coughs> I have given you this land. Therefore, go and take it. God said it. Well, then, you know, believe it. That was positive thinking. Caleb was the one who said, yes, we can take it. And who else? Caleb and two of them. Joshua. Joshua. Then two said, yeah, we can go and take it. The other uh, eight, he said, nah, come on. Did you see the, the, the people over there? Come on, no way. Negative. But who is bigger? Those people or God? <laughs> God is much bigger. So don't worry about it, eh? God has everything in its hands. <clears throat> so, if we go now to uh, Numbers 21.5. <clears throat> Numbers so what do we see here? And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have ye thought brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? <clears throat> For there is no bread, neither is there any water. And our soul lo loteth this light bread. What does that mean? What, what, anybody knows that word? Loteth. <clears throat> Do you know what the word means? What does it say in your, in your Spanish language? Sorry? Hate. Hate, yes. It's like what? Oh, disgusting. Hating, oh, we hate that bread. Wow, what? that's negative, isn't it? <clears throat> and guess what? That bread, you know what? That, who's, who, who, what does it say? What does the Bible say about that bread? Whose bread is that? Sorry? Manna from heaven, but whose bread is it? Yeah, but, but, yeah, but who is eating it? Angel's bread. You, it does it say? The Bible says that it's an angel's bread. <clears throat> and I believe that that uh, that bread has all the vitamins and all the minerals and all the, the, the all that they need they didn't have to go and buy the bread they didn't have to <clears throat> they can cook it or bake it or whatever they want they can eat it raw you know it's still good but yet they say ah 
we had enough of that bread. Come on, give us some meat. <laughs> Isn't that what they said? And what happened when they asked that? What did God do? They, they're starting to die from, from that. There were snakes begin to uh, bite them into, <clears throat> and they begin to die. Anyway, we're not going to go into that, but we see here very negative. The whole nation negative. Say, hey, come on. <clears throat> uh, well, <sighs> angels bread. Do you know, let me ask you a question. <clears throat> Do you know that even today there is this kind of bread? Do you know? Have you read that there is a bread, a manna from heaven falling down? I don't know if today, but, but I read a story that in Africa somewhere, in, in, in some, some uh, <clears throat> place where we had our, um, our uh, missionary uh, field, there was manna falling into, because they had a lot of drought, and manna was falling from the, from the heaven. They had a bread of angels. Can you believe that? That's a, so beautiful. It's not, oh, I wish I could try that, you know. <laughs> and you know what? They took it to the mayor of the city, and he said, wow, you know. <clears throat> the whole city became, the whole, I mean, town, whatever it was, became Adventist because of that, because God looked after them. So even today, you had that. <clears throat> I don't know if it's still falling, but it's, you know, it was when I read it. <clears throat> yeah. Well, <clears throat> have you heard of uh, Dr. Nedley, Dr. <clears throat> Neil Nedley? You heard of him? Have you heard, you know what he says? Neil Nedley says that um, the people, pessimistic people, so you have optimistic and you have pessimistic. Those neg optimistic are the positive people, pessimistic are the negative ones, right? <clears throat> so, so pessimistic people uh, uh, without children, maybe you would think that, oh no, wait a minute, where am I? Uh, pessimistic people, uh, they are more likely uh, <clears throat> that in their life, looking negatively, they have a more chance of being depressed, <clears throat> lowered immune system, and are having increased risk of early grave and are frequently going to the doctors. Wow, they have bigger risk of physical and mental health. When they get a flu, <coughs> pessimistic, pessimists say, I will probably get a, a pneumonia. Uh, but optimist, is ignoring the symptoms. Realistic optimist says, uh, I think uh, he thinks like this of the best, best outcome, <clears throat> but he is preparing for the worst. So in other words, he is thinking, all right, I got a flu or I got this or I got that. <clears throat> okay, he's, he's, uh, he's in reality, uh, but he's not making a big fuss of it. He's preparing for the, he's thinking of the best, but he's preparing for the worst. So that is the best way to be. Be optimistic, realistic. Real, realist optimist. You know, that's the best one. Because you have an optimist that is out of the reality, and you have those who are in reality. So that's, that's the best. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so let's go to uh, and see what we should think and how we should think. Romans 12, 2. If we go to Romans, <clears throat> what does it say? And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So what does God say? Hey, listen. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing your, of your mind. Amen? May God help us to renew our mind and be transformed. <clears throat> and 
And if we go to Psalm 119.15, who would, who would like to read this, this verse? Let's read everybody together. Can we? I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. In other words, I will meditate upon your law, law, O God. Amen? So that's what we need to think about God's law. <clears throat> um, and if we go to Philippians 4, 8. Philippians 4, 8. Uh, anybody, anybody, any brave person wants to read this one? <clears throat> uh, Philippians 4, 8, and it says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Amen. So here we see what Apostle Paul says, Hey, brethren, whatsoever things are good, or good report, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are honest and lovely, and all of these things, think about these positive things. So this is what the Bible teaches us. Just like in the beginning that we... Uh, we talked about this uh, man that wrote this book, right? Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> you know, when we are always depressed, Ellen White says in uh, Review and Herald from January 1890, she says like this, when we are always depressed and are complaining, we before the world are living impression as if God does not want us to be happy. And in doing so, we give wrong witness about our Heavenly Father. Do you want to be a wrong witness about your Heavenly Father? No, not really. We want to be a real good witness. We want to be show to the world happy father that we have in, the uni in, the, in our universe over there, right? <clears throat> and Jesus came and showed us the father. He was always happy even though he was a man of sorrows. <clears throat> and then Ellen White says, <clears throat> Many despises from which people are suffering, I mean many diseases from which people are suffering, are just a result of inner depression. Sadness, worry, fear, unhappiness, guilt, unbelief. All of these are contributing in lowering our power for life <clears throat> and is leading towards destruction and death. So what is actually lowering our power for life? All of these negative things. Depression, guilt, sadness, all of these things are just lowering our... I know, I, I, I know when I was depressed, you know, <clears throat> a couple of times, you know, many times. I know how, you know, I'm so tired after that. I just, just can't. And, and, you know, when I was depressed, I can see, you know, I, I try to do something. I'm slow. I can't, I can't do things fast because of this... Uh, a situation that I am in. But we need to be positive thinkers. We need to be, even though, you know, it happens sometimes because of our um, sinful condition and because of our who knows what situations, but <clears throat> we have to always go back. And in those moments, we need to look to Jesus Christ, say, Lord, heal me from this depression. Heal me from this devil who is trying to press me down. <clears throat> You know what? When we look at it, this uh, pandemic that they have made, you know, what, what, what does the Bible say? The Bible says that devil is what? What is he? Sorry? No, no. Who, wh what is the devil? What is the devil? He's a thief. He's a liar. He's a deceiver. He's a, a murderer from the beginning. <clears throat> and guess what? What's happening in the world right now? The same thing. We see the results of the devil. 
Lying, 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 constantly deceiving people with this pandemic. <laughs> Come on. We need to tell the people, hey, wake up, people. Guess what? It's not what they say. It's what they do in, is th that's wrong. It's what they're doing is wrong. <clears throat> and they're saying, blah, blah, this. This is good for you. This is good. No way. But anyway, we, we're, that's not our topic now. But we have to be more positive thinking. So, sadness, depression, worry, fear, unhappiness, guilt, unbelief. These are all the ones that are taking away our power for life. <clears throat> May God help us. But on the other hand, Ellen White says, before, <laughs> and I already said it, when, when did Ellen White live? When did she say that? Now, that was 18, uh, that was 18 um, hundreds, 1890. She lived way before this uh, Vincent, what's his name, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and the other guy. Uh, she lived, right? And she was talking about this way before. Uh, <clears throat> so, on the other hand, <clears throat> um, yeah, we need to have more courage to be courageous people. We need to be courageous. Hey, stand up. You know, I've seen, I've seen, um, <clears throat> unfortunately, I've seen some things, you know, people send me a lot of things. I got about thousands and thousands of uh, messages sending me, you know, and I've seen one <clears throat> in China. Some men, you know, strong men, hitting the woman. And guess what? None of the men stood against to, to help this woman. Only the women st stood against them. <laughs> hey, man, be careful, all right? <laughs> Don't be a woman. <laughs> Stand up. <laughs> you are a strong man. Stand up for those who are suffering, for those who are, uh, you know, abused. And this was just, you know, hitting the woman, hitting men. And they were, finally, they, were, they, they ran away so, so far. You know, they were just, just so crazy what they were doing, you know. <clears throat> but what I'm trying to say is that, you know, we need to be courageous. Courage. You know, people in the past, <clears throat> we had uh, uh, in the dark ages, people were courageous. They went to death. You know, they weren't afraid of the flames or of this. Jan Hus, Jan, you know, Jan Hus and many others, they were killed <clears throat> for the faith, for Jesus Christ. We need to be courageous. Amen? Yeah. Um, so we need to have her courage, hope, faith, sympathetic. We need to be sympathetic, eh? For those who are suffering, for those who don't know what's going on, for those who are deceived. We need to be sympathetic for them. And we need to have love, amen? And we need to uh, become healthier. And that will be healthier extending our life. And would, would you like to live longer? Well, then be more positive. Be courageous. Be hopeful. Faith. Have faith. Sympathize, sympathize with others. When we are content and happy spirit, <clears throat> um, we are healthy. We have a healthy body and power of life. What is this <clears throat> then positive psychology? This is positive psychology. Ellen G. White, in her time, with two, degree, two, uh, two degrees that she had, just two, um, um, she, she had only um, two, how do you call, um, two grades that she had in life. That's it. We, she didn't have much uh, education, but she wrote so many good things, you know. <clears throat> She knew more about positive psychology uh, and before of us all. Amen? And at the end, here is God's promise. If we go to Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 29, 11. 
For I know, let's read this all together, please. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Amen? To give you a good ending. Amen? And if we go to um, Romans uh, chapter 8, verse 28, <clears throat> and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. May God help us that we are positive and that we you know, think of those things that are of good report. Even though maybe we have sometimes negative thoughts, maybe sometimes happening something in our life that is negative, negatively, but we can always think positively. Even in, in the negative situations, we can think positive. Oh, maybe God, God is doing something uh, good. It, it, and it says over there that at the end, He will give us the, the outcome that we like. Amen.